Hey guys, it's Kelly from paperbeadrollers.com and today we're going to make a fun, pretty bracelet that I know you're gonna love. We're going to take some bright green paper beads and treat it with a splash of metallic color that is gonna show off all of the lines and contours of the paper beads. Please take a minute and click the subscribe button. It's a zero cost way you can support this channel and keep the free tutorials coming. I appreciate your support. Let's get started. Here are the tools and supplies you need for this project jewelry pliers, wire cutters. Now I use this jump ring tool, although it's not required. A very small paintbrush and the smallest paper bead roller diameter that you have. You'll also need eight four millimeter jump rings and eight eight millimeter jump rings. You'll need 14 of these rhombus connector charms. Now these have loops on each end of the rhombus, which makes them so much easier to work with. You can get these at paperbeadrollers.com in packs of 50 for just $1.99. I will link it in the description. Then choose a small clasp that you love. I'm just gonna use a basic lobster clasp here. You'll also need a very small gauge of wire. I'm gonna use 16 gauge. You'll wanna choose a metallic craft paint. In this case, I use the Folk Art Color Shift. This is a pink and it's kind of glittery too, which is really nice. You'll also need a hardening glaze as you normally use with paper beads. In this case, I'm using Triple Thick from DecoArts. The paper strips that you'll use for this project are out of my Micro Saucers and Rounds digital download pack. I'll link it in the description in case you want to purchase the digital download. It comes with SVG files to use in your cutting machines and a printable PDF so you can print the shapes and hand cut them. Now you can modify the size of your strip based on how large you want your bead to be. If you want a larger, chunkier bracelet, you can use a larger strip and size up your large jump rings to match. Now this strip is roughly three millimeters by nine centimeters using 65 pound cardstock. To make this paper bead, you should use the smallest size of paper bead roller that you own. Here, I'm using the green 564 inch paper bead roller from paperbeadrollers.com. When you're rolling a paper strip that is this small, you need to be very careful and center your strip exactly. Now you can adjust it a bit right after you roll it if necessary. Just press it between your fingers. Glue down the end and we're ready to do the metallic treatment. Now I experimented with this treatment and I got three different end results. I think they all look great, so you've got some options when making your own paper beads. Now remember from our supply section that I used metallic paint for these beads. A regular paint won't work exactly the same way. For bead number one, I applied the metallic paint directly to the uncoated bead. If you don't want any of the original color to show through the bead, this is the way to go. Then cover it with glaze. For bead number two, I mixed the metallic paint with the triple thick glaze and then applied it. Now this resulted in less coverage and more of the original green bead showing through. However, it also changed the green color a little bit. Can you see how the green in bead two is darker than the green in bead three? Now that's largely gonna depend on what kind of paper you use to roll your bead. For bead number three, I glazed the bead with the triple thick first. After it dried, I applied the metallic paint. Now this preserved the original color of the bead paper, and it also allowed me to better control how much metallic paint I put on the bead. I think all three of these application methods look great. It just depends on the final look you want for your bracelet. Also, do you see how the second bead is a little oddly shaped? That's one that didn't get centered quite right while I was rolling. With beads this small, that can be difficult to see at regular size. It's more obvious here because I am highly zoomed in on these beads. When working with micro beads, it's easy to accidentally glue your bead to a wooden skewer. I mean, they're so small, it's almost impossible not to get some of the glaze on the skewer. To combat this, I use a very small paintbrush. Now you can also rub the toothpick on a wax candle or crayon to keep it from sticking or use plastic toothpicks. Once the glaze is dry, I apply the metallic paint. The paint sits on top of the glaze and you can push it around to get the kind of coverage you want. While these beads dry, let's start assembling our bracelet. 
The bracelet I'm making is about seven and a half inches long. You can adjust the size by adding extra sections if needed. Now for the first section, I attach two rhombuses with the four millimeter jump ring. I love using this jump ring tool. It helps keep my jump rings aligned properly and it's just quick and easy to close them. You just slide the jump ring into the slot and twist your pliers a little bit and the ring closes. You can grab one of these jump ring closers on paperbeadrollers.com. You're gonna make seven sections like this. Now the next section is a bit more difficult. Take a few inches of the 16 gauge wire and fold it over an eight millimeter jump ring. Hold it in place with the pliers so it doesn't move. Wrap the wire around the jump ring four times. You can do more if you want to, but I do four wraps. Wrapping the wire before you close the jump ring makes this process so much easier. Once you get your wraps done, squeeze them with the pliers so they're tight together and they look neat. Put one of the rhombus sections on the jump ring and flip it over to the side opposite the opening. Now string your paper bead on the wire. Hold the wire in place with your pliers and wrap it around to match the first side. In my case, I'm gonna do four wraps. Cut the wire as close to the jump ring as possible. Use your pliers to bend the end of the wire around tight to the jump ring so it doesn't poke you when you're wearing the bracelet. Put on a second rhombus section. Now close the jump ring. Now I like to make three sections like this and then I connect them all with additional bead sections. Now you can build the bracelet out in whatever order you like best. This is just the way I do it. When all of the sections are put together, it's time to add the clasp. I used a four millimeter jump ring to connect the lobster clasp on one side of the bracelet. Now I intended to use an eight millimeter jump ring on the other side, but it looks like I actually used a six millimeter jump ring here. I mean, either one will work. And now you have a beautiful bracelet. This method could also be used to make matching earrings and a necklace. And you can also see here that I did a bead treatment with blue metallic paint over green beads as well. I mean, any combination of colors with the metallic paint will look great with this method. If you give this tutorial a try, please hop over to the Paper Bead Fanatics group on Facebook and post a picture so I can see what you made. Until next time, happy rolling.